Good afternoon, Keepers of the Cash. Gary B, the casual comic guy here. And I am here with something different today. So, recently a friend of mine, Everything Nerd Reviews, and he just passed 900 subscribers while well on his way to 1,000 nice and quick. Really great guy. You should go sub him up. I'll put his link down below. He did a challenge where you show your top three collectibles. Uh, so, he showed quite a bit of stuff, actually. <clears throat> and then he challenged me to do the same. Here's the problem. I am absolutely horrible at narrowing stuff down. I am not the guy to ask to do a top five, a top ten, a top anything because I, I can't choose favorites that easy. I can't do it. But I'm going to share just my top items in my personal collection. Mm -hmm. Now these are regardless of value. Some of these aren't going to be worth anything. Some are going to have a little bit of money to them. I just love them for what they are. We'll go through them. I'll talk a little bit about them. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So I'm going to start it out. And uh, like I said, don't get caught up on value. What's in my personal collection that I love doesn't always have a price tag attached to it. It just means it means something to me. And it's that simple. So starting out, we're going to go simple. I am a big, big, big hockey guy. I absolutely love and adore hockey. I am a diehard New Jersey Devils fan and just a diehard hockey fan in general. You're talking to a man that grew up as a kid an hour away from Canada on Hockey Night in Canada, listening to Ron McLean and Don Cherry talk all the time, discuss hockey. You'd watch the Habs play the Leafs. You'd watch the Whalers play the Jets. Some of you don't even know who those teams are anymore. You don't even know what the Habs mean or what team I'm talking about. And if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you because you're not going to care. But um, I love hockey. Hockey's amazing. And I got two hockey things to share that mean a lot to me. So this is from the 1980 Olympics where my uncle was working at the time. And... No, I, I know this was used in a game. I don't know if it was the big game or not. Um, too, I was too, got it too young to really remember. But I do know the U.S. hockey team played with this puck. And I have the 1980 Lake Placid Olympic puck used in a game. I don't know if it was used in a big game. It may have been. I don't remember anymore. I just know it's amazing. I love this puck. I've had it my whole life almost now. So, now, next... When I got married to my incredibly awesome and beautiful wife. And this is when you know you're getting old. When you watch a player come into the league as a rookie, they play their whole career in the league and then retire because they aged out. And you watch the whole thing and then you're like, wow, I'm old. I watched a whole guy go his whole career. So I've been a Devils fan since I came into the league. Mm -hmm. And I never expected that they would win anything. Never expected they would be that team. And if you guys know hockey, you know how bad Jersey was when they first started. And then, you know, you had you had people like Craig Billington, um, Alexander mm -hmm. Cimac, Valeri Zalapukin, Chris, Chris Terreri. People that were standing on their head for the team, but it just couldn't hit that next level. But then they got a goalie, Marty Brodeur. We all know him. If you don't know him, then you don't know hockey. And that's okay. It's not your thing. But... My wife picked me up an authentic jersey. So this has the fight straps and everything. This was a wedding present way back in 2008. So, and it's as official as official can be. The same has a lot. Of, you don't see me wear it a lot because I'm scared to death to get anything on it. I wear it every once in a while and I'm careful as a kitten with it. Um... This thing was, back in the day, was almost $500. So I don't know what they charge for them now for these official jerseys, um, which are game-wearable game jerseys, but it's heavy. It's awesome. It's a piece of devil's history to me. And I had the good fortune 
of being 13 rows behind Martin Verdor when he got his 100th shutout. So that was even better to me. I was at the game in Jersey in their new arena with one of my best buddies, uh, Eric, and um, he was a Philadelphia fan. And we were there watching him play the Flyers, and the Devils shut him out 3 nothing that night. So I was happy. Every time I went down to Jersey to watch the Devils play, I had the good fortune of them winning. And um, just good times. Uh, great great Philadelphia fans. Uh, the Philly fans are probably the best fans I've ever watched a game with anywhere. And I've seen three games with Philly fans. Always had a great time. So don't let people talk bad about Philly fans. They're pretty awesome. They're pretty welcoming. And they're pretty great. Um, as are the Devils fans. Absolute blast. So we got hockey out of the way. All right. So that's two of my favorite collectibles in hockey. And of course, my cat's just going crazy on the scratch post back there. Next, let's talk books. All right. And uh, so signatures. You guys know I'm not a big signature guy, but there are signatures that do mean something to me. And uh, we're going to go with one of my all time favorite authors. I got two favorite authors. You guys know one of them, obviously, is Robert E. Howard. But. This other guy I grew up reading, and he gets classified in horror too much. He's a great imaginative fiction writer, and his stories encompass so much, and some of them are on such a grand scale. But And I'm talking, of course, of Clive Barker, who's actually on the cover of this book. And this is a signed book, so Clive, Bar uh, Clive Barker's signature is right there and verified so it was nice so i got this clive barker signed book again uh this is someone i was reading since i was 13 years old and i'm going to be 51 one of my all-time favorite authors someone i can go back to the well and always read and always enjoy there's so much in his writing and then i have this pack of cards all right Clyde Barker signature series of cards, and it has his signature on all the cards in, in foil. But on this first card, and of course it all features his art, you have his signature, his real signature on this card. So, super awesome, super fantastic cards. Not all safe to show on camera, so we won't. And then, of course, finally for Clyde Barker signatures, and I'm going to put the picture here, is an official Clive Barker painting because he's also a well-renowned artist. All right, his uh, art has sold worldwide. He's had exhibits and his art is fantastic. It's weird, so you gotta like the weird. And uh, sorry, sugar-free lemonade freezy. Mm, so good. Now, loving Clive Barker as much as I do, you of course know about Hellraiser. And who doesn't know about Doug Bradley? The only guy who can play Pinhead. The only guy that's ever played Pinhead well. And he is the epitome of Pinhead. And Pinhead got that name in the movie. In the book and before that, he was just a Cenobite like the other Cenobites. All right. Uh, so Pinhead is a moniker he got throughout the films. He was never named that in the book. But Doug Bradley was fantastic. And uh, no matter what, you can always hear him say, you opened the box, we came. And this, uh, like the Clive Barker book that signed, this is also a gift from my sister. She met Doug Bradley and, he, and she had him sign a picture for me. It says, to Gary, welcome to hell, Doug Bradley. Now, how awesome is that? Just super fantastic. Absolutely love that. So another cool little collectible in my collection, right? Then you guys know, huge Roy Thomas fan. I want a Roy Thomas signature on a signature series comic. It's one of the grails I want to get. Having said that, I do have his signature and it was on an Amazon purchase I had made. On Conan, the Ultimate Guide to the World's Most Savage Barbarian. All right, and then inside, Crown Preserve Us, Roy Thomas. So you know I love this, especially with how much I I like Roy Thomas. I still need to get him on a book. 
preferably a Conium book so I can get that signature uh, verified. It'll happen one day, I'm sure. We'll see. Uh, next book. And again, this isn't anything special maybe except to me. Uh, another, uh, the next four books are gifts from my wife to me. And I am a huge, and you may not know this about me, I am a huge, huge, huge Tomb Raider fan. I have been playing Tomb Raider since the original game came out 20-something years ago. And I've always followed the games. And I've always followed the character. I have all the novels that she's been in, and it, which is five. Uh, there was uh, some paperbacks, but just I love the character. Again, strong female character, uh, capable character, and just a uh, fierce fighter with a fierce intellect. So there's nothing not to like about Lara Croft. And I have this compendium, which has all 50 issues of the top cow run. And it's just an absolutely fantastic 1 to 50 issue read. The art in it's amazing. You had, you had Andy Park in here, Billy Tan, Tony Daniels, Adam Hughes, uh, Francis Manipole, Michael Choi, Eric Basaldua, and uh, Greg Land. So you had great, great artists on this series. Fantastic book. It's a thicky. Incredible compendium. 50 issues here. I've read this thing more. I've read this thing quite a few times. And if you notice, that spine is crispy clean. Because I read it like this. I take, I, I take care of it. An awesome book. Something that's been a treasure in my collection since I was gifted it by my wife. Now, you guys also know I'm a Captain Marvel fan. So, I think for my birthday two years ago, my wife got me the Marvel Omnibus, Captain Marvel. Again, it holds a complete first series. Absolutely fantastic. And just something I absolutely love. Just a great, great book. It was a great read. And then back to Conan again. Another gift from my wife. Uh, with an incredible uh, cover there. So, all right. Can't go wrong with Frazetta. Frazetta on the back. You got Frazetta art throughout. And this is just a premium collection of Conan tales. And uh, absolutely love it. So, again... Big, big favorite of my collection. And then, another gift from the wife. All right, The Complete Chronicles, Robert E. Howard. And this is the uh, centenary edition. Centenary edition. Ooh, pronunciation was difficult there for a second. So this, this is a nice little uh, bound. Really great book. Another thick book. And uh, just all the Conan tales. Absolutely fantastic compilation, the way it's put together. Um, the little sketch art inside is amazing. Just uh, a must-have in any Conan Collector's Library. Just a fantastic book. And we're going to get to comics in a minute. So next, we're going to do a toy, right? So you guys all know, of course, I'm a big Conan fan. And when they, brought, when they had this out, it took me a couple of years to get it, but I have it now, all right? And we are talking about Conan the Barbarian, where that's the issue one cover picture. And, of course, this is the Barry Windsor Smith Conan. Absolutely fantastic figure, all right? And I just couldn't wait to add this to the collection. Uh, just a Super 7 figure, absolutely gorgeous. I love it. And... I'm hoping that one day they do a John Buscema one as well. That way I could have my two favorite Conian artists and have their figures. Now we're getting down to it. We're going to talk comic books now. And I got a few different things, plus I got some things you guys have seen before. But, alright, this is a, uh, that's a lot of weight. But, we got it. So we're going to start out with something different. And I love these back in the day. I have a couple sets of these. These are mini comics you got in Drake's Cakes. All right. So the first issue, and I have, I still have these sealed too. These are the readers, and I have a couple sealed copies of each, multiples. So Spider Man, that's number one. You got Jubilee on the cover, you got Rhino. 
Fantastic little read with great art inside. This is a four issue mini. Then you got Spider-Man and Wolverine was the number two. And again, it's just odd stuff like this that really, really gets me. I love it. And I love having it in the collection. I've had this since the early 90s, I think, when they came out. Number three has the Hulk with Spider-Man. Right. And then, number four, you got the Silver Surfer with Spider-Man. So, a great four-issue mini that you could get off Drake's Cakes. If this is something cool and you like it, they're on eBay. You can get them. And then, we're going to do another set of mini comics. And I had these... I had these... Two of these when I was younger. Okay, I had the Spider-Woman and the Hulk when I was a kid. Um, but here we go. So we got Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. And these are the Amuro uh, gum ones they came with. So A-M-U-R-O-L if you're looking them up to buy them. And they were great. They came with a hard stick of gum. And when I bought these, they still had the old gum in it, which I threw out. There's the Incredible Hulk one. And these are, these are fun little reads, too. Captain America. And the Red Skull's in there. Great little read. All right, Archie. And then, of course, Spider-Man. And then last, I got this one, like, at least protected four times because it's my favorite one. We got Spider-Woman. And I might buy another one of these Spider-Woman one day and just send it in to get graded just for the hell of it. But those are books. I love those mini comics. They're just favorites of mine in my collection. Um, I don't care uh, what things are worth. They just have to have value to me. And we'll keep going here. So we're going to get to a couple floppies and then some slabs. So, of course, if you're talking floppies, you guys know I'm a big Captain Marvel fan. And then, so we have her first binary, X-Men 164. I still got to send that out one day and get it graded. Okay, we have Avengers Annual 10. Most people want this for uh, Rogue. I have it for Captain Marvel. Uh, this one, I've seen some love. This is the only copy I have. One day, hopefully, I'll have a better copy, but I doubt it. And that's okay. I'll still always have this one. All right, then we have ASM 194. Again, a well-loved copy. It's probably about a 4, 4, 5. One day, hopefully, I can get another one of these that's in a better grade. But if I don't, it's okay. I still own the book. It's still a great classic cover. And then, of course, we have... X-Men 130, which is the first appearance of Dazzler, another favorite character of mine. So those are some of my favorites unslabbed in my collection. And now we will go to the slabs and wrap this up for you guys so I don't make it too, too long. And of course, when we're talking slabs, number one is going to be Conan the Barbarian, number one. I've shown it on my channel a bunch, so it's nothing new. You guys have seen it. I have it in a 6.0. Fantastic book. It presents like an 8.0 or more, so I'm super happy. There's one little uh, one little uh, bent hair on the cover, which is uh, going to keep it at that grade, so there's no sense in cracking it and trying to get a better grade. Nor did I want to. It presents just fine the way it is. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely love having that. Then we got another favorite character of mine. Oh, no, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll stay with Conan for the moment. I got a couple more Conan slabs I want to share, which are favorites. So this is uh, one of my favorite stories, a great story about a young Conan starting out and just his indomitable will to survive because that is one of the main characteristics of this character. And one of the best stories, and this is a border cover, uh, where the art breaks the border, which is something I always loved back in the old Marvel days uh, when they did these for a while. They did them on all their titles. So this is Conan the Barbarian in a 7-5. This is issue 16, Barry Windsor Smith art, Frost Giant's Daughter. 
And um, they call it Night of the Frost Giants here, but it's from the story of the Frost Giants daughter. Just a fantastic issue. And actually the first slab I ever owned. This is the first book I bought and slabbed when I got back into comics. So this was a raw purchase that I sent out. I got it pressed, cleaned, and shipped away. So I was super excited when I got this back. All right, so that's that one. Now, this next one is important because it's a first appearance. And this is Conan the Barbarian, issue 23. Got it in a 6-0. And this is, of course, the first appearance of Red Sonia. So, had to have it in a collection, of course. And I bought 23 and 24 together. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get both of them really quick. And so we're going to go to 24. And this is uh, the first cover appearance of Red Sonia. Uh, Barry Windsor Smith and just absolutely looks amazing to this day still my favorite armor of Red Sonia's absolutely love it and uh, just One of the prides of my collection. I don't care that it's a 6-0 it presents beautifully It's a book that was affordable and that great for me again. I bought this raw And I think it was $80 raw when I bought it at the time or 70 one of them was 80 one was 70 and all right so then to go along with that one more Robert E. Howard character but this character was tweaked to become something a bit different to fit in the Hyborian age she was in a different age and that is of course Red Sonia whose classic redesign by Roy Thomas as a warrior in Hyboria elevated the character and still going strong today so Red Sonia number one I'm super happy with the 9.4 on that. Again, a book I bought raw and uh, got cleaned and pressed and sent out. All right, couple, uh, three more books over there, guys. Now, the next one, some people try to give me flack for. This is a green label. And uh, this book had this problem with a lot back then. So a lot of these books I saw had the same issue, the bottom staple detached. And I think it was part of a printing defect because I've seen this book a ton and a lot of them with the bottom staple. And that's the only thing wrong with it. So this is an 8.5 Miss Marvel 1. Now, I remember somebody in the comments saying, well, that book's not worth much. It wasn't the point of me getting it. I don't care that it's not worth much. It's what it's worth to me. This is a favorite character of mine. This is her number one issue. And to me, it's important. To me, it's loved. It doesn't have to be super expensive. It doesn't have to have great value. I don't need to take this out and brag about it to somebody. I just need to have it to enjoy it. That's what it's about, collecting what you love to me. So I like to collect what I love. I don't buy stuff to flip it. And I'm not criticizing those who do. If that's your game, that's your game. Do you. I do me. I, I just worry about buying what I love and what I want to keep for myself. Now, the, na the last two is another beloved character. Ooh, I'm going to have to replace the bag. i got a scratch on it somewhere. All right. So this is her first appearance and then her first solo uh, tile. And of course, we're talking about Jessica Drew Spider-Woman, Marvel Spotlight 32. Got this this January at 8 -0. It was a grail I was chasing. So super happy with that. I paid... Uh, just a little over 200 for it. Really great book. And uh, one I didn't think I was going to get out of the way this year. And I got it out of the way in the first week. So I was super happy. And then, of course, I got this in a 6.5. And I might have it in a higher grade raw. But the first time I got this book, I was giddy about it. So I sent, I got it pressed and sent it out. I came back to 6.5. I'm not going to send another one out. It's okay. I have, I have three more of these in my collection raw. And I'm good with that. Um, so this is uh, Spider-Woman number one, and there's not a shortage of these books. You can get them in nine eights. Uh, this is six five, and just another favorite character of mine that I've always followed: Jessica Drew, Carol Danvers, uh, Allison Blair, uh, Dazzler, and just absolute stuff I love. So that is things in my collection that are most prized to me. Uh, thank you. 
uh, Everything Nerd Reviews for uh, reach, uh, for challenging me to do this video. I really had fun with it. It's a lot of stuff I don't show, and I hope you guys saw a few sides of me that you didn't know existed. So that's what I have for you. I'm going to lead this challenge to two other people, and I'm going to challenge uh, Jimmy, because I have to challenge the usual suspects, and Jason to make a video with their most prize collectibles, regardless of value. Just what do you love that's in your collection? I don't care if it's worth a penny. If you love it, it's it's perfect. All right. I don't care if it's worth a million dollars or a cent. It doesn't matter. Just show me what you love that you own in your collection. And that's it, guys. That's all I have for you for now. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I had. And thank you for sticking with me. And until next time, keep it casual.